Well, hello again, everyone. Nick, Michael, I can see Frazier. Hey, again. It's Halloween five time, guys, because <laughs> it, we, we have no choice. <laughs> Are really. you ready for this? We really have no choice. We, no, this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awful. <laughs> so, guys, if you have your own bizarre copy of Halloween five, for whatever reason, just came with the box set, you know, <laughs> right, go ahead man. and uh, hit your time step to zero. And we'll give you a little countdown here to sync it up in three, two, one. Play. Hey. The Revenge <laughs> of Michael Myers. <laughs> uh, whew. Um, it's weird. It just says Halloween 5. There's no re- subtitle in the film itself. Yeah, there's no revenge. Not really. <laughs> they ran out of money. <laughs> there really is <laughs> they, no revenge They here. couldn't... <laughs> Daniel Harris' <laughs> first billing. They couldn't... Uh, they couldn't afford having that extra title on no, there. No, just <laughs> no time, no money. Um, oh, man, okay. <laughs> so, this movie comes out, well, 4 comes out. It's a decent success. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers has returned. The studio goes ape shit and says, we got to turn this around. We got to have another one, like, in, immediately. In, we need one in the theaters 51 weeks after the last one, which is very familiar to us. Um, especially in 1989, it's very familiar yes. to us, as Nightmare on Elm Street has just done the exact same thing yeah. with the exact same results. <laughs> yes. Having um, a decent idea and the absolute worst execution. And no patience whatsoever to do it right. M. Night Shyamalan could have done both of these films. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Shut them simultaneously and came out with the exact same quality. uh, I do like the the slicing and the the, the coming up of the uh, cutting up of the pumpkin there. That's nice. I mean, we're starting off hot. Yeah. Um, it's not going to take us long for this movie to turn into a shit show. Go right off the deep end. Um, like it's minutes into the beginning of this movie. Yes. <laughs> uh, that, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, interestingly... It's, it's the, slightly metaphorical because you're taking the iconic opening credits imagery of the first film and just slashing it to shit. That's correct. <laughs> kind of a weird throwback here we've talked about on our show yeah. here or these these commentaries before yeah. that this whole replay the end of the old movie yeah was a trick in the early 80s pre home video yeah but in 1989 home video is like at its absolute zenith yeah peak of the mountain yeah. everest yeah like there's never been a better bigger boom in home video than say 1989 yeah and I don't know why they felt the need. Like, how long is the the runtime on this movie? Eighty eight minutes or something? Some, if, so if if, if, you, if you mean that, they they probably said ninety seven minutes. Oh, but of course, minus all this redundant nonsense. I was gonna say, if they got to ninety minutes, whose idea was it to say, hey, put it put in the end of the previous movie here? The only reason is because they add this little extra bit of him floating down the freaking river. Well, right. They, well, they're because, continuing his part of the story. Right. With a s- sliver of retcon. Um, so the mine shaft idea is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, like, it's a decent visual. Yeah. Here he's survived again. Yeah. 95 bullets. Yes. Well, like we said last one, it didn't seem like any of the bullets actually hit him. Right. <laughs> the uh, redneck, drunken, hillbilly vigilantes... <laughs> hit more like they actually yeah. killed old what was his name ted hollister yeah and this r.i.p is actually i think they didn't show dynamite the last film well no they cut it off yeah um but here he is he escapes he's gonna go down the uh lazy river yes <laughs> like this is ridiculous yeah in more ways than one a full-grown 200 pound human being is not going to float down the creek. Well, he might. I mean, you could float. Not, I just... I don't know why not, he wouldn't just stand in, up. Not so much in this shallow of a water, I wouldn't think. I don't know why he wouldn't just stand up and walk. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's... This isn't 
the friggin' Colorado River through the... <laughs> yeah, the White Rapids. Right. And he just happens to stumble upon the one guy with a shack on the side of the river. Like, wouldn't this... Wouldn't this guy be, like, a, a town, like, known to the town? Yeah. Like, oh, that's the guy that lives down by the river with a parrot. Yeah. Like, everybody would know this guy, right? In town? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's small town America. Who wouldn't know that this guy's here? Yeah. And as we'll see, it's like, this guy apparently just never leaves this little shack because he never, no one has any clue that this guy who's got laying comatose in his freaking place for a year. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. We're back in familiar territory of just god-awful crap. I mean, the parrot's kind of cool, or whatever bird that is. I don't yeah. I don't know if that's a specifically a, a type of parrot. There, I, there's got to be a... The bird people, help me out. <laughs> what kind of bird is it? So, he's collapsed. Yeah. In this shack. The guy does not seek medical assistance for this guy whatsoever, as we'll see. So he just lays there in the same spot for a year. Let's put that on ice for a minute. <laughs> That's done. Okay, let's talk about the. We're going to come back to the old man in the shack. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Children's clinic. <laughs> is that a thing? I guess it could be a they thing. They just happen to have one in Haddonfield. Well, I don't... Did they say this is in Haddonfield? Yeah. Is it oh. Had Children's Clinic, Haddonfield, Illinois. Well, now, see, that's far-fetched. <laughs> and it's Halloween Eve. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they really... This was such a good ending. Mm-hmm. And you could have gone a dozen different ways with it. Um, yeah, yeah. Daniel Harris has talked in interviews about how she originally kind of thought that she was going to be the killer in this film. Yeah. And they were going to have, you know, ex now, this, in my opinion, is some of the best acting. Mm-hmm. This little girl, she could have been nominated for an Oscar if this were a drama. Yeah. And, you know, not shit on by the Academy yeah. for being a horror movie. Yeah. Because... Like, this girl acts better than a lot of people today <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that win awards. <laughs> and, okay, now wait a minute. Yes. And here's our th Thorn Cult. Thorn yes. Cult. Yeah. Yes. And Mixed commentary. <laughs> well. That's going to be all over the place. I, you know, I, we might need a break after this one. We're going we, to need some time. We might have to do a different and then come back. Uh, we'll discuss that. It was very early on. Um, we'll, uh, let's, okay, let's so... let the badness simmer. So, it's been a year. Yes. This guy's still making his fucking stew <laughs> with his parrot. Slow cooking, slow cooking <laughs> stew, man. You gotta, you gotta take some time with it. And... He literally just sat up in bed... After one year! Yes. With an even worse looking mask. That this guy was so nice to hang up on the shelf for <laughs> yeah. him. He literally <laughs> laid there for one year, yes. is what you're telling me. Yes. I mean... Can we just roll credits right now? <laughs> somebody, somebody took a pen and a piece of paper and they wrote down the idea that said, <laughs> Michael Myers lays in this shack for one year. With no medical assistance whatsoever. After being shot by 200 bullets. <laughs> then somebody else read that piece of paper and said, this is a good idea. Let's Put make it. Film. Let's make it. And then some studio boss said, I'm going to hire somebody to make this scene happen. Yes. <laughs> How many... <laughs> you can't even say that one person's to blame. 
Like, yes. there is a litany of people who approved this idea. <laughs> and not to mention this whole psychic connection bullshit in this film. Oh. Right, because they touched hands, and so now they're two become one yes. kind of situation. Um, Loomis is... Uh, He's just there. Loomis's scar has his uh, has grown. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> it now expands above his eye into his forehead. It's like a growth or it, something well, now. Every year, the scar gets a little bigger. <laughs> parts of it fall off. Parts of it, parts add. <laughs> My face already hurts from smiling. <laughs> it it, it kind of reminds me of the gag in Robin Hood Men in Tights where Richard Lewis's mole keeps moving around his face in yes. every scene. <laughs> <sighs> oh my. <clears throat> so now it's Halloween day. Yes. She no longer speaks, which doesn't make any sense. Makes no sense. Unless it, because Michael Myers doesn't speak. He, I don't know. She's giving him movement and he's taking away her speech, is it? Oh. Oh, Max. As if things weren't bad enough, we're going to get worse. <laughs> Wait, it's going to get worse. With her, yeah. She, she, she becomes like our lead heroine or something. We're going to kill off Ellie Cornell and give her give you this. Well, they're, they're doing the old, uh, the old nightmare swerve, right? Where they give, yeah. you, they give you Tina at the beginning and make you think she's going to be the character. Okay. And then they dust her off or they uh, write, write her off. And then the, the brunette takes the lead. She's Tina. When in fact, the brunette's na character's name, I think, is Tina in this movie. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, fantastic 80s character here, the brunette. Oh, well, yeah. Tina, is that her name? Yeah. You're just the one who gave her that name. Well, I thought, I thought I, we're, reading the sub, we're reading the subtitles, and I, I thought I saw the name Tina, but I have, I'm not sure. It's not 100%. Tina, got it. Her name is Tina. Like, they film these movies so back to back <laughs> that these they haven't aged a day. Danielle Harris hasn't even aged. She, she's she's yeah. the same age. She hasn't got an inch taller. Well, a tire squealing had to mean that Michael <laughs> Myers was driving. <laughs> Remember when this was a thing? Where people like write messages on bricks and throw them through a window. The evil, was this a, evil child must die. I was about to say, is that a cult or whatnot? But mm, let's not get into that sort of thing. Look at the uh, the mop head on the on the <laughs> pumpkin over here. That's with the straw hat and the no neck. That's very off putting. It's bad. I mean, it's a good idea, but it's the no neck really throws me. Yeah. Haddonfield Children's Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, no apostrophe. Oh, see, you're, 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 you're my grammar man. I just don't understand why it's so hard to learn what a, apostrophes only have two yes. jobs, two, and people can't figure them out. <laughs> Pisses me right off. <laughs> oh, anyway, this Tina gal, I love the fishnets, love the <laughs> love the scarf, love the hair, the earrings. I love the 80s, the jean jacket, the pearls. This is, I mean, there's leopard print or uh, zebra print. Everything is perfect. <laughs> Tina is perfect. <clears throat> and now this is the the third time, if you include the original, that we've had... Another dog? Um, well, no, I wasn't going there, actually. Oh. Um, I was going with the... Um, main character being the kind of quiet, reserved one, mm. and the friend being like the stereotypical party girl kind okay. of. Okay. And this is, I think I mentioned in the last one, um, that I thought they used a different house. I feel like this is a different house. Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
Not sure. You always saw the, the the house in the other one at, at like night time. So well, like, and the other one was also the sheriff's house. You saw yeah. more of that. Yeah. Remember these giant markers? Like they don't make markers you'd, like you'd, this anymore. You'd get high off them and everything. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and they were. I mean, it, it was like super thick. Oh yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a you know a, sh a standard sharpie. Hmm. It was like. A remote control, or a, I don't know what. Max is just barking at the... And, wait a minute, so now the dog, she knows what the dog is thinking, is what you're selling me? Because she's drawing the barking dog. Well, that's because Michael is looking at the dog. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Who taught her how to sign? <laughs> Like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is very uh, Friday, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Yeah. Part Two. Yeah. Almost the exact same scenario. She's in the shower. She answers a phone, and then she gets killed by the. Yeah, this is the same. The same damn thing. <laughs> Equally ridiculous with the murderer, like. Driving to town and figuring out where <laughs> where people live. <laughs> I believe there was also some uh, controversy about um, her death, right? I think she was very displeased about doing that because she felt like they'd done so much groundwork with her and Danielle in the first film to just kill her off. On a whim in this film, just felt very disrespectful to what and then, she had done and what the fans had really kind of come to appreciate about the for the film. There was also some. I thought there was some controversy about the the manner in which she died. It sounds somewhat familiar. Yeah, I feel like I saw it on one of those documentaries. Yeah, that they proposed an idea, and she's like, "I'm only in this movie for a few minutes. You're not going to do me dirty like that." Okay. And then they made her change. They she made them change the okay. the death sequence. I might have had something to do with the fact that she is almost completely naked here and whatnot. Could be. <clears throat> I mean, and she's only in the movie for ten minutes. Yeah. Huh. Oh, here's our bubbling cops in this movie. Yeah, why are cops always bumbling? Uh, like, it's almost like comic relief or something, right? Yeah, it's not good comic relief. I mean, and, and in franchise, we've had some pretty good cops. In this franchise? In this franchise, I mean Sheriff Brackett, Meeker, and everything, and they're, they're pretty solid cop. Pretty much the only cops you ended up knowing. I mean the. Uh, Fairly realistic, down to earth cops, whatnot. And then you introduce these kind of bumbling nimcom poops. <laughs> Just feels so well. See, off the, offbeat. A year ago, Michael Myers killed all the cops, so they had to hire all new cops. <laughs> <laughs> and th these were the only guys they had left. <laughs> Jeez. She called Gutenberg and Tackleberry. And well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like this uh, jacket he's got on the, this uh, sport coat. It's nice. A little, little change from the tan stuff you wear. A little yeah, gray I mean, action here. Yeah, this is nice. I gotta get me one of these. I can't get over this scar going now <laughs> above his eye. At least it's consistent in this film now, within its own continuity so far. And now he's just screaming at this child. <laughs> yeah, like it's another one of the. Seven-year-old kid getting screamed at by Grandpa. <laughs> right! <laughs> I, I don't care what you write, just write! <laughs> Lesnar's is well off, well off the deep end with Lewis in this film. He's just like... Well, what's left to do? He's so one-dimensional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's evil. Don't go there. Yeah. Get away from there. <laughs> <Get your> right! <laughs> 
Get your ass away from there. <laughs> it's still one of my favorite. It's my favorite Loomis line. It's my favorite Loomis line. <sighs> and I think they tried to do the old, like, all you see is the silhouette thing, but it's weird. Yeah, it doesn't function in daylight. And she totally would have seen him. Yeah, this... It doesn't make any sense. I do like no. her hair way better yeah. here. Like, this is sexy time hair. Yeah, yeah. The sweater I could do without. Yeah. Looks like Nancy's pajamas. <laughs> yeah. I work in a home decor store. You don't put a vase on a, on a table in the hallway with nothing in it. <laughs> Especially next to a, a window, you know. I mean, come on. Like, why is that vase on there? <laughs> like, somebody was walking down the hall with it and just set it down and forgot to. <laughs> why is really? Why is there a dresser that, that in the hallway? hallway? <laughs> the hallway is far too narrow for all this. A dresser. This, this, <laughs> this accoutrement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, interior-wise, it looks like the same house. You know what? I think it is because yeah. the address is the same. Yeah. <clears throat> Only I would notice the address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Why is there blood on the photo? And she gets a scissor to the neck. Uh. Why? That's the theme of this movie, yeah. is why. Yeah, why? Well, it, it really should be called Halloween 5, see, why? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. at this point it's like, what is Michael's modus operandi now? Because before it seemed like it was like, kill everyone in his family but it, it seems like at no point in this film might be corrected later but it never seems like he actually is attempting to kill jamie because now they have this psychic bond right it's another nonsense friends. so no. he just is it just random nonsense that he's just offing whoever's in his path well he's got that tattoo that makes him evil and <laughs> so he just is evil and not human yeah and He's not human. Yes. Look this at this. Is, this is the same shit he did in the last film. Right. <laughs> I mean, Loomis has become a he, joke. He, he, just, he just, they've given him such theatrical dialogue. He can't help but just, there's no other way to deliver it. But to just amp it up as much as you can. Young Will Ferrell here, <laughs> our cop. I do like them fishnets or tights or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the same house. Yeah. We're we're to assume that that was Michael <laughs> Myers. Yeah. As a, a a point of view shot. Yeah. What and kind he, of, uh, and it's like, well, he's hanging out around the house for what reason now? Oh, can't eat just one. Jay's potato chips. <laughs> That's true. You can't just eat one potato chip. <laughs> oh, here's our 1980s floral couch <laughs> and wood paneling, or uh, not paneling, but wood trim. Oh. Man, I was hoping that shot went on longer so I could see the camera and the reflection of the glass. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. I've seen movies with like $200 million budgets and you see the shadow of the cameraman on the actors. It's Parker so Man. bad. Like, in all the dailies or whatever, you you didn't notice <laughs> this? I, it, it literally happened in one of the Transformers movies from Michael Bay. Well. The five billion special effects shots, you can't fix the, the, sh the shadow of the cameraman. I think this girl's attractive. I like her. Yeah, I, d I just feel like the character is written to be very abrasive. Would there or would there not be blood all over the wall where this girl was just yeah, stabbed yeah. minutes ago? <clears throat> what, what, what the ambulance in the last one? There should be blood outside this, the well, house sure. and everything. Well, <laughs> And then, in the same movie, in the last one, they stuck a shotgun through a girl and there was no blood. Very blood on the outside of the ambulance, no blood. 
through the wall. <laughs> Let that sink in for a minute. And then ask yourself again, why is there no blood here? Because this movie is horseshit. <laughs> That's why. There's no reason. There is no reason whatsoever for any of it. <laughs> what now? Michael is doing like crank doorbell calls or something. Well, yeah, ding ding <laughs> dong ditch. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that what you do on on Halloween? <laughs> little little D D D. Now she looks like someone looks almost like someone from like one of the Elm Street films. Yeah, or a night or a Friday. Yeah. Yeah, she looks very familiar. Yeah. I don't think she is, though. No, I mean, I'm just saying that she looks very much like one, was, one of those ladies, like a, a Brooke or something like that. Or, right. Or what have you. Even a little Lisa Wilcox-esque. So, I mean... Michael just standing around. Oh, yeah, there he is, right in the window. He said two people he could just killed right there if he wanted to. Like, nah. Nah. Nah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> just, nah. Never mind. They're not family. It's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, they, even Rachel's like, she's not even family by blood. She's just family by legality. By happenstance. Right. Adoption. In the other direction. It doesn't make any sense. No. Though, and it's, it all goes back to part two, where they had to make her the sister. Yeah. Or him the brother. Yeah. Whereas, you know, had they just left that out, all of this could have been completely... Vastly different. Completely different. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless as to what you could have done. Um, you know... Yeah. Ten years later... You know, the, maybe the town doesn't celebrate Halloween anymore or something. Which happens in six. Right. Uh, but it could have been done correctly Yeah. had they done it in four. Yeah. I don't know. You could have done a billion different things. Yeah. By what they did in number two, they lashed themselves into a very narrow path for the franchise. Yeah, they painted themselves in a corner. Is that Michael standing? That's Michael standing in, in the tree, watching the two people he had the prime opportunity to kill <laughs> ten minutes ago, instead of just stalking them around town for no reason. Michael Myers gets around, dude, and he has no logic to anything. He Can we does. in post get that Beach Boys song, that <laughs> "I Get Around" song, no. and just like overlay it no. right now? <laughs> well, look at this dude. He looks like the guy from Friday Four. Uh, the, the, the nerdy guy with Crispin Glover. Oh. His partner. Yeah. Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> Teddy versus Jason. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, the teddy bear. <laughs> teddy bear. <laughs> I mean, this guy's got Fonzie written all over uh, him. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. And she wants to be with him? Yeah. Which one of these girls you like better? The brunette or the blonde? Mm, just on looks alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, aesthetically. The brunette. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm with you. I think I like because the brunette. Because the, the blonde looks like about half a dozen other ones I've seen in these same films. Ooh, that almost smells like a poll question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is it in the is park. The He's holding that little uh, that little gardening gimmick yeah. that uh, like Johnny Depp had in. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't. It was it was Rod that had it in Rod. Night Nightmare One out in the yard <laughs> there. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I think I think I like the brunette better. Not that they're both I mean, they're both good-looking people. Yes. I like them both better than uh Ellie Cornell. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> what what what? Is this another pseudo dream sequence? Pseudo dream sequence, maybe? I don't know. I can't tell. Exactly. That's the problem. Which I guess is good because, like, I, I suppose that's what you want, right? 
You want everybody to assume it's actually happening and then go, aha, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not. There's a good ways and bad ways to execute that. I get the feeling that this is supposed to actually be happening. And this music is very weird. Yeah. I mean, it's it's actually very Kinda. similar to the Halloween 3 jingle with the... Bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum, bum. This is kind of, <laughs> kind of a goofy quality to it, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It's not... It's not... Uh, it's not Michael! See, it's not even a dream sequence. It's just bullshit. Right. He's the equivalent of the black cat coming out of the oh, scared God. jump scare, you know? And he's just the goofy janitor. <sighs> I'm gonna yell at you some more! <laughs> He is just psychotic. I'm going to grab your feet. <laughs> I'm going to yell at you until you make him come to me. <laughs> I'm going to throw things. It's like a Jack Don't Nicholson you performance or something, you know? He's evil. <laughs> You're the only one that can bring him to me. <laughs> bring him to me. <laughs> like, What? Like Batman shaking out a, a thug. Where's the Joker? I, well, I just. <laughs> now he's telling her the story about a coffin being dug up. Do you want this to happen to you? He's two seconds away from smothering her for crying out right. loud. Dr. Loomis. Don't know Please on. not lay on top of our patient. <laughs> Don't traumatize the, the the mute psychic any more than <laughs> she's already been. Psych- <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Who comes out with this shit? Well, in 1989, <laughs> with the year of the bad sequel, we had we had Nightmare or Friday the Thirteenth Part. It took, uh, it took three people to write this shit. Did it? It was three, huh? <laughs> it was three I, writers. You know what? I was going to say we had Friday seven, including the director, with the with the telekinesis. But it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't part seven. It was part eight that came out in nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. Um. This dork. Uh, <laughs> this is the same Vincent drugstore. Um. Oh, what is this shit? Oh, this is the Man in Black. It was originally conceived as Michael's twin brother. Oh no. Um, because that's where we're going. No, please no. <laughs> so Richard likes his wide-angle lenses. What is the abandoned house? Oh, didn't you know this is the Myers house? Oh, it, it changed colors and not... it, it's morphed into a gothic mansion, you know, <laughs> because that's where we're going. <sighs> because who gives a shit? Because continuity. Wait, are you being serious right now? This is the Myers house in this movie. No. Yes. <laughs> it's blue. <laughs> exactly. With, <laughs> it looks with like bay like windows. It. They tore it down, they rebuilt it to look like a piece of shit. And they're going to tear it down again and rebuild it to make it look like it was in the first film by the next movie. <laughs> You come I, home, I'm Michael. actually I'm I I I need I need to take five <laughs> I right now. For a second, you're about to walk, get up and walk. <laughs> I, I almost just got up and left. <laughs> it's like okay, I'll, I'll I'll try on my own. I don't know, guys. It's, it's just... No, no, no. I'll never leave you. <laughs> this is the Myers house <laughs> with a laundry chute. What, what you get when you have a director named Dominique. I believe it's a man, too, right? Yes. Yeah, I thought I thought so. As a kid, I thought it was a woman. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there we go. I, this is some of the goofiest shit. Yeah. 
So, okay. <laughs> I just oh. wait. What? Come on. <laughs> this is all ridiculous. This is. Is this the worst horror sequel <laughs> from 1989? <laughs> we're, we're 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 getting to that. We're getting to that. It's gonna be a poll, people. We will we'll, we'll prompt you at the end. So we have two polls. Okay. We gotta make up for. <laughs> we gotta make up time. for all the all the all the polls we didn't have. Yes. <laughs> oh, poll three. Why is this the Myers house? <laughs> it's less of a poll in this life. <laughs> oh, I could go on for days. <laughs> Halloween part Y. <laughs> Not five, it's Y. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to sit here and drink my coffee. What is and... that expression on his face? What's that? What kind of animal was that? I think it's a, I don't know, diseased rat. <laughs> Make sure that laundry chute's locked so that later <laughs> on it can come into play. <laughs> and again... He's walking around town stalking the people he had the perfect opportunity to murder earlier. <laughs> I don't, yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Well, this guy's waxing his car. What oh, you, this, <laughs> this guy's got a... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. All brands of beer, two forty nine, dollars for a six-pack, I think. <laughs> Is that good? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever bought beer. <laughs> Halloween candy is also two forty nine. dollars There's a Pepsi sign. Comic books on the outside. <laughs> it's kind of a bad thing in October. They're going to get rained on and so. Sure, good. sure. Okay, so they... Cops are just giving them a hard time for no reason? No reason. No reason. So you're telling me I can buy? I've got only two fifty. I can either buy beer or Halloween candy. Hmm. Mm. That doesn't even seem like a real option to me. I'm <laughs> taking the candy. Oh yeah. Monday through Saturday, nine thirty a.m. to ten p.m. You figure Sunday would be a day that you'd <laughs> want your grocery store or your quick food mart <laughs> open, don't yeah. you? And I like that the name is Quick Food Mart, but groceries is fourth on the list of things that they offer at this particular establishment. That's interesting. Daily Herald. That's oh, really? A, that's an actual suburban Chicago newspaper. I don't know if it exists I don't, anywhere else. I don't but think that that was... I'm sure the Daily Herald is the name of lots of possibly, papers. but at least for us here, that, that resonates makes a, because a, a geographic connection for us. Um, even though this was also filmed in Salt Lake City, yeah. so... That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know if that, what the case is there, but at least for us. I don't know if in our. In the here and now, that makes a connection of sure. us. Sure, so. right. I mean, even if it's a, well, here he, here he comes again. <laughs> you can't tuck in that goddamn mask around his collar. It drives me nuts. You're looking movie. in the mirror. You can't see this asshole walking <laughs> right that? up behind you? Yeah. Aw, he needs some Clearasil. Clearasil. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, you done it now. <laughs> you kind of made a big mistake. <laughs> you don't want to piss off this guy. You, oh man, he wants to play. That's for sure. <laughs> he almost feels like a character from Friday Five, you know. Yeah, those two guys on the side of the oh, road. Oh yeah, the two gay guys yeah. <laughs> from Philly or wherever they were from. Yeah. Now that's a that's a fun little kill, I guess. <laughs> it's not very becoming of Mike Myers, yeah. but no. Um, but yeah, the uh, yeah, fix the fucking car. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, yeah. yeah. Well, this isn't creepy at all. <laughs> <clears throat> Definitely not as good of a costume. No. Um, and how sweet is this little boy? You put glitter in her hair. This little yeah. pirate boy who just he just loves her. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. I had a crush yeah. on her, too, when I was a kid. <clears throat> I 
kind of still do. <laughs> and I think for anybody out there who thinks that this is like creepy and weird, I think she might actually be older than us by <laughs> like a year or two. Mm, I think she's... Give me two seconds. <laughs> So, she's around our age, people. It's not creepy. Born in 77, so it's 77, three years older than yeah. We were, than we are. Yeah, so she was actually like 12 years old here. Or 11. Yeah. So, this is so bizarre. This man in black with the yeah. the boots and the now he's smoking a cigarette and he's got the same tattoo so he's like yeah it, it, he, he got off a bus i mean come on like yeah. seriously yeah. he got off a bus at least i would go off a trainer so i give him some class trains are classy i agree yes. with you i agree with you mysterious people don't come to town on buses that it just boggles my mind. <laughs> like, I am the personification of evil. Where can I catch the next bus stand? <laughs> There's the Greyhound, <laughs> goddammit. I want to sit in a sitting a sit in a bus for twelve hours and a bunch of sweaty Right, senior citizens. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. No. No, the evil guy with the coat and the boots, the pointy boots, would have his <laughs> own personal train car. Yes. Like, I want to explore a movie option where we, we just tell the story of him and how he gets to Haddonfield. <laughs> and, <clears throat> oh, Billy, Bill Hill. You're wearing my present? She got him this mask? Oh, that mask. So now he's wearing a different mask. So this is, I think I brought this up the last time about him being in a different mask and it being off-putting. Yeah. Like, this is off-putting. Yeah. Like, what if this was his mask the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> like, how weird would that be? <laughs> but then if that were the case, he would be this heralded, like, iconic character, and then he'd put on the white one for the one scene, and we'd go, oh, this is shitty. <laughs> God. He looks like that guy that sells... Uh, you know, the guy from Star Star Trek. And, <laughs> and here you see the eyes. Like, it's weird. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. we're not used to seeing the eyes. Yeah. Although, at the beginning, when he was in the, the shack, they, he had a full face shot of before yeah. he put the mask on. Oh, here we go. Here we go again. Where is he? <laughs> and where the is a man in black guy just again wanders around town and does nothing until the final right. minute he, of the movie. He just he just steps and just walks around and stands there and it's actually kind of reminiscent. He's on, a, he's on an extended smoke break. <laughs> I feel like it's reminiscent of that uh, iconic poster shot of the ex from the Exorcist. Okay, of, yeah. Of him yeah, standing yeah, yeah. outside in the lamppost. Yeah. Like that's how I feel like they treat him. Is yeah. Just him. He's he's always in the lamplight. He's lamp just light. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, more Michael driving. Man, nobody gets around like Mike Myers. <laughs> and for somebody who never had a lesson a day in his life. God damn, he drives better than I do. That's that's true. <laughs> I could not pull I, this shit I've off. I've been in the car with you, and uh, <laughs> I think I'd, I'd rather be in the car with him. <laughs> Um, Driving about half a mile. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Nick is not a bad driver. <laughs> you can get sandwiches and you can definitely get cookies. <laughs> the cookie store. <clears throat> He's... Oh, store! 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 Store. Okay, it'll take us all night to figure out what right. store. Right. Let's just go to every store. <laughs> oh, Billy. Ugh. 
He just... You got a mute girl and a kid who's stuck with a stutter. This is yeah, I was going to say. It's sort he... of a bad joke. Yeah, I mean, obviously none of... This is a children's home of some kind, yeah. right? So none of them are all, all there. Yeah. Cookies. The cookie woman. Everybody knows the cookie woman. <laughs> Oh, he knows. Oh, yeah. Oh, he knows that. Oh, shit, he knows man. the Cookie Woman. He's uh, he's taking a time outside there. <laughs> oh yeah, we just hide the other one. <laughs> I I like this one better. That's a real taste treat. <laughs> Wouldn't it be tasty? <laughs> a real treat. <laughs> It's tasty treat, right? <laughs> Jeez, look at these cops. They're on top of things. Why does that sign say a real taste? I'm stuck on this. <laughs> she just wanted her Marlboros. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Why are they bringing her in? What Be did she do? Because of the psych psychic connection. She oh, I see. I see. Yeah, all that nonsense. Nobody's actually discovered the fact that uh, the sister is dead, right? I don't think so. Why wouldn't they be, like, looking for her? Hmm. At what point do they start looking for the sister? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't think these couple of characters would be so uh, <clears throat> bright and happy. You know what if, I mean? If, like, if, what, like, why would they go get her and not go get the sister? Right. Because if they knew that she was dead, I don't think these characters would be so happy and smiling and whatnot around each other. It'd be like, more like this grieving and whatnot, but... Right, they're obviously more scared about the boogeyman. Yeah. I mean, I like that she can talk now. Yeah. But look at this. I mean, look at this <laughs> acting. Yeah. Like, this is incredible <laughs> out of this, this girl who's 11 or 12 years old. I mean, she's better than me and <laughs> most people. You're in danger. danger. The whole town's in danger. It's evil. <laughs> the evil is here. <laughs> That's all he does. It is. That's his whole character. Why have I never done this impression <laughs> before? <laughs> oh god damn it all he does is yell or or talk in a real low voice <clears throat> but at least the makeup is consistent it is it is <laughs> yeah I don't know who did the effects on this one bumbling cops give me a ride okay and old Billy the pirate feels so so sad for his friend. Why are, did I miss something? Why are some of the black uh, cop cars black and white, and some are white? Is it state and and mm. town? Maybe. Maybe they didn't give a crap. Maybe the budget. Was, I don't know. Maybe the budget was higher on this one. They could afford. <laughs> Is Different he, cars. Man in black just strolling through town. That's doing all he shit. does. He just walks around town. With, with his bag. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> oh shit. Oh the <laughs> Like this love story is better than <laughs> anything else. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, here we got some good costumes. There's a guy in a lobster outfit back there. I don't know if you saw that. We got it. We got village the village people. people. <laughs> yeah. Here's our devil. Oh, yeah. Here's more village people. There was a cowboy, right? And yeah. Village people. Everyone's checking their face in this movie. Maybe Claire still was a sponsor. <laughs> and now, the, I assume y'all have this on mute because you're listening to us, but the music is now playing to alert you to the fact that it's Michael Myers yes. driving this vehicle. Yes. Just in case you weren't sure. <laughs> Although, I th is he still listed as the shape in the credits? I don't was think he, he, was, he wasn't in the last film, I don't think. He was listed as Michael Myers? I believe so, yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> <laughs> you got a ladybug and a pirate. <laughs> oh, look at that ghost. Yeah. With a he's, he's ball that. sack for a nose there. <laughs> <clears throat> Meanwhile, these two are. What game is this? Some kind of child's game of. <laughs> and we're getting ready for another swerve. So here again, why would they sell this costume? Yeah. Like. It looks like Jake Busey. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Where did she get a cat in the farm? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's just a litter of kittens? I mean, I guess it's possible. <laughs> So ridiculous. <laughs> oh, he's going to get it first. <laughs> well, he's hoping to get it twice in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking more the other way around here. This poor cat. No cats were harmed in the filming yeah. of this movie. I do like the lighting in here, though. Yeah. Although I'm not real sure where the light's coming from. <laughs> like, that's not moonlight. No. Oh, did they find... Oh, they found the rest of the kittens. Okay. Redemption for the storyline. This is the, was this the same, oh, this was the guy from the grocery store, right? The, well, the, might, uh, might be. The 249 beers. Maybe. Guy. It would make sense. Why, why <clears throat> right. Two different actors. Right, because uh, she was with Fonzie, and the blonde wanted to be with uh, the grocery store man. <laughs> the grocery store didn't close till 10 p.m., so I'm <laughs> not sure how, what time of day it is currently. <laughs> But I mean, I imagine at 10 p.m. you can't just leave. You got to bring the comic books inside. <laughs> you got to count the money. <laughs> it's got to be at least 11 p.m. right now. Was he the cowboy? He put this costume on over the top of his cowboy outfit. <laughs> Don't tell me that he's going to kill a kitten. He was smoking? <laughs> Who was smoking? I like the gloves, though. <laughs> is this scene necessary? No, this is way overextended here. I feel like you could have cut out the kittens. Yeah, this is... The as much as I don't think going into a barn to have sex is very terribly comfortable... You, you could have just done that. Well, it's I like, guess they needed something for her to do while the other two were banging. Oh. 
Makes you want to get that little uh, kinky about things. Like a threesome is what you're saying. Yes, I'm saying. <laughs> they don't often portray that on film. No. That would have been a nice little surprise. Not in, hor- not in slasher films, which is surprising. Slasher films apparently like monogamy for some reason. <laughs> Note to self, if I ever read a, another horror movie, I'm going to put a threesome in there because <laughs> it's just never been done. If you, if anybody knows of one that we're not thinking, I'll put it down here in the comments because... <laughs> you know, what is their fascination with the kitten, kittens? I don't get this. Just... Well, okay, now she's going to leave her alone. Well, they, didn't, they were messing around, so they didn't get to see <laughs> the kittens. All of them. <clears throat> I do love kittens. I'm a cat person. <laughs> I'm allergic to some cats. Oh, so. that's a shame. I just don't get where all this light's coming from. This is taking way too long. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, Michael is spending a lot of time wandering around and doing nothing in this movie. Kind of like number two. Right. <laughs> and kind of like the man in black here who's just yeah. walking around doing nothing. I mean, what did we say it was? 97 minutes long? Yes. If we take out the replay of the beginning... We take out everything with the man in black up until it's time for him to actually yeah. do something. We take and, out the kittens. Yeah. We've, we've got ourselves a good 65-minute movie here. <laughs> <laughs> and see, they, they do the whole the whole fake-out thing so this can go off like this. Like she thinks he's still playing a joke on him, which he is again. The fake-out the audience again, which is freaking exhaustive. Well, yeah, I mean, like, we've done it once, or twice, or three times. It happened in the last movie with, remember, the whole town showed up in the one street corner, all dressed as Mike Myers. Yeah, I I don't don't get this repeating gag. It just, it just, this is... I mean, out of respect for Ben Tramer. Yes. R.I.P. Stop this, please. I I mean, how, how many men have to die... And if you're going to pay tribute to Ben Trimmer, get the right freaking wig. <laughs> That's right. Michael had for 10 seconds of the last film, you can find your own. <laughs> well, now we've given us something to analyze here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Take off the ascot. She finds him to be attractive. Yeah. Like, He's winning this relationship, right? Yeah, he, he he's got a gold standard here. She's got kind of, got like the bronze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's drinking champagne, and she's drinking Schlitz malt liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Michael's roaming around this barn. Oh, yeah, he's just watching. <laughs> Doing shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's she writhing for? He says, Well, done. no, I know. He's, he's not doing much yet. I, I'll, I'll, the, the pants aren't even off. Yet. I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna call BS on that because okay. I, I feel like it's sensual. I feel like mm-hmm. the touching right. and the. Oh, here's the old, uh, the old, I don't have a condom. Oh, but I do. Oh. I came prepared. I don't know why he made that face. (laughs) Oh, well, because they're on hay. That's why. And what is this? 
still has his pants on, too. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you've come this far. That that looked like very unnatural love yeah. making. I was more looking towards the theatrical hand movements. <laughs> Sadly. And <laughs> goodbye. Again, that's a Friday the 13th kill right there from part two. Yeah. You can, like, see the prosthesis on his chest. Yeah. Now he's got more farming equipment. <laughs> Let me just pull this Why out. Why don't you just run away? This, again, that's very... Friday 3 with the 3D. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say that's very, very much an unnatural reaction. Usually you would just run the fuck away instead of trying to... Right. Why did she get balls the, all of a sudden and... Dig the pitchfork out of the guy's freaking torso and try to attack the, the, the guy, the serial killer with the mask on. Hey, fella, over here. <laughs> hey, fella. Well, because now they think... That... Yeah. Uh, it's exhaustive. This gag, this, this whole gag is been set up far too long and it's taking way too long to pay off and it's forcing multiple payoffs what is that costume I don't know there's my lobster <laughs> it's, the, it's the red lobster what is that fucking outfit I don't understand it's a man right <laughs> it's a man dressed as a cat is that what that is <laughs> terrible it's like you rolled together some dryer lint and pasted it together <laughs> for the outfit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it doesn't look like that. God. Who are they driving to? Was Oh, man, I squandered an opportunity. I was trying to come up with the name of the... The cat's name from the musical Cats. The one, like the famous one. I'll know it when I see it, but I can't remember it now. Oh well. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was supposed to be. Cats was big back then. It's a shit looking costume regardless. <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber ain't improving that shit. No. Oh, the kidneys got blood on him. <laughs> Poor little thing. No. Cause okay, so like even if no cat was harmed, the cat still got blood on it. They had to wash the cat off at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. Pretty sure he was breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like her outfit? I mean, it's not really supposed to be anything, I don't think, but... Yeah. It's... Like a French maid. It looks French maid slash with Elvira or something. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. I don't know. It's meant to look sexy, and that's pretty much yeah. what it accomplishes. Yeah, I, I'm, so. I'm not... I don't hate it. No. Did they just have everyone drive off just so they could play this sequence out? I think the answer is yes. I would I would tend to agree. <laughs> because it's that contrived. I would tend to agree. You're going to drive very, very slowly. I mean... There is so much <laughs> driving. You're in a car. In this movie. You're he in drives... a muscle car that could probably go 0 to 60 in about 2 seconds. And you're still chasing after her. Well, this is his <laughs> M.O., right? Just just li linger around <laughs> linger for a while. Around. <laughs> Might as well do it in the car, too. <laughs> now you're going to run after children. Or drive after children. <laughs> like... I don't think they would even go there, right? <laughs> like, you wouldn't run over a child with a car in a horror movie? It's not the most popular idea. 
But why no. why wouldn't it be? Like, is there a difference? You're already watching a fictional story yeah. about adults murdering adults. Why is it all of a sudden bad if you want to have a kid die? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, the moral police come out <laughs> now? <laughs> Same. It's similar to the dog thing yeah. that we talked about before. Like, what See. a double standard it is. Like, oh, right. we, can, we, can, we can murder all these adults all day long, but the minute you want to touch a kid, oh, you better fucking yeah. not. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's a story. <laughs> What's happening here? Can <laughs> somebody explain this to me? We're driving around the forest in circles. We're not hitting any trees. Oh, there's until a tree. Oh, and then a car just explodes. <laughs> that doesn't happen, by the way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't know if you've ever, you know, noticed that people hit trees and telephone poles all the time with cars. Yes. I yes. myself have been in a car that hit a telephone pole. Oh. It didn't explode. Oh, no. <laughs> I was not driving. <laughs> I was only minorly concussed. It's fine. Yeah, apparently the stuntman injured himself on that m maneuver, too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. The guy was actually portraying Michael Myers. Don Shanks. Oh, Don Shanks, sure. Yes. And then he also gets injured later on in the film again. Because his nose is broken. <laughs> it's a very well, hazardous... That's very, what he gets for not... Hazardous. For not, you know, killing people when he had the opportunity. <laughs> You got to end this shit like 40 minutes ago, but no, you had to lurk around town. This should have been a short film. <laughs> short <laughs> film. It's like now now he chooses to try and kill Tina with a freaking car. You could have He was standing her in her minutes ago. He was standing in the house with her. <laughs> she, she He was she, just She looking. was like 10 feet away from you before. Now you want to kill her? No. Okay. Wait, where did he Wait, get it's this the most difficult time to do this shit. Where did he get this knife? Was it just in the car? I guess so. But where? It's not his car. No. <laughs> Fonzie didn't have a knife in the car. And he hasn't killed anyone with a knife so far. He's grabbed everything else but the damn knife. Oh, look at her. There we go. What? I mean, not even a good kill. No, it's pretty weak. I don't even... I actually don't think she dies. I think... That's just a flesh wound. But then it's a question like... Why Why not? did he kill her, for right. fuck's sake? Why did he, in slow motion, stab her why, shoulder blade? Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> he had her, like, 10 feet away from her earlier. So decides to walk around and wander around town. And now... Have her in the passenger side of the damn car. <laughs> Let her get away. <laughs> so, when he waits around in a freaking barn for 20 minutes. <coughs> then waits till he gets into a car that chases him through a field. <laughs> Try to run her over. To run her over. Finally gets her with a knife and doesn't fucking kill her. <laughs> But he pretty convincingly stabbed her shoulder, so it's okay. Flesh wound. And now there are... Michael's like, I'm trying to cut back on the murder right now. I'm just going to flesh wound you right now. Right, I'm trying to maim you. I'm, I'm try trying to pace myself. There are about 100 people in this forest right now, and nobody <laughs> can get their hands on him. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that in the entire course of these films, nobody's ever tried to arrest Michael Myers <laughs> or detain him or bring him in for questioning. It's always gone straight to murder. Oh, you've killed somebody? We'll just murder you and we'll murder you too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. If your neighbor committed murder, the police would come and arrest him. Yes. They wouldn't just murder yes. him back. Yes. It's not death wish here, people. So Charles Bronson here. Of course, Charles Bronson oh. as Sam Lewis would be pretty entertaining. Hold too. on. Now that the now that 100 people are not in the forest anymore. <laughs> no, there's nobody. He, he's just going to come he's, lurking. Oh, right, there, he, there right, he was. Right through the if forest. If people walk 20, 20, 
20 yards into the freaking forest, you would have had him. The movie would be over. But nah. Nah. He went absolutely fucking nowhere. All he does is lurk around. He's very easy to find people. If you just open your eyes to look around. He was standing in the goddamn park. <laughs> yeah. He had to walk through broad daylight to get to the one part of shade in the entire park where no one would see him. Right. He didn't <laughs> teleport. <laughs> oh. Ellen was just standing here monologuing. Yes, he is. He's <laughs> right freaking there. I can see him in the freaking frame. Well, he's talking to him. What do you think he's talking to? He's... Right, but why isn't he doing anything? You got, you've got a fucking You gun. have the right There's to something. remain silent. <laughs> he's saying like, we're waiting for you to come to you, come home, come to Myers' house, do something. He's right fucking there. <laughs> you had fifty cops here <laughs> twenty seconds ago. Do something. <laughs> You're really fired up right now. <laughs> Just like <laughs> you know, he's there. You had the entire freaking police force. They got Roger Predactor here from Ace Ventura sitting around. <laughs> I love this guy. He was on uh, ER for many, many years. Uh, love, love that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, again, logic is escape. Now, now, there's, now they got a fucking SWAT team. The guys with fucking radios and, and assault rifles. Right, where shit. was the... Here's... What, why, where what, was the SWAT team in the forest? What? Why do they have to set up this here when they just... Loomis just had Michael 20 yards away from him in the forest. Well, he didn't have backup then. The backup left a minute ago. <laughs> they all... <laughs> if he knew he was there, why'd you let all the cops leave? You're so angry right now. Just, there's no logic. This is the worst movie of all time. This is terrible. I, I can't say that because I've seen Jason X, but I will say that this is up there this, in this... one of the worst movies of all time. One sloppy fucking script. This is what happens when the studio says we need a new movie by next Halloween, mm -hmm. and then apparently uh, two monkeys and a retarded child got together and <laughs> tossed around some ideas. And, <laughs> and this is—they just picked words out of a hat, and, and this is the script that happened. And and, and the monk, one of the monkeys ended up being the director of the film. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> what is happening? Let me have a seizure. Oh, Billy the Pirate, where is he at? <laughs> There's our sig signal. Sigils, yeah. Uh, drawn on the wall there, a little bat signal of, of doom. <laughs> Inside the, the gothic Myers house. That is suddenly like an old Victorian home. <laughs> <laughs> This is unbelievable. Literally <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I just don't understand. Boy, the sheriff seems so ineffective in this movie when he seemed pretty, pre pretty solid in the last one. He's got he's got like twenty times <clears throat> as many cops in this film. He can't do jack shit with any of them. Why is every single cop leaving the scene? How many goddamn police cars? Okay. Be I live because in a Loomis wants to do it himself. Because he's an egotistical bastard. I live in a town of 150,000 people. A big town. Yeah. We don't have this many cop cars yeah. in the whole town. <laughs> you don't have a SWAT team either. No. Well, maybe. <laughs> we might. <laughs> They don't get much work. I'm just saying, even if we have this many cars, yeah. there's not this many cops on duty at any yeah. given time. Yeah. Again, none of this makes any fucking sense. Oh, now you'll come. So, okay. he basically, okay. it's, he wants everybody to leave so that Michael will come and not be there when the cops are there. But then he just was there in front of Michael in the middle of the forest with no cops around if that's what he wanted. Why didn't he do what he was going to do then instead of doing this bullshit? 
because they only have 35 minutes worth of decent ideas in this movie, and they had to prolong it, Nick. <laughs> For seven so, more minutes than necessary. So the next time that you are having writer's block on one of your scripts, okay, I want you to brainstorm a little bit and go, how can we prolong this? Well, we can have a scene with fucking kittens. <laughs> we... I can throw logic out the window here. Well, definitely throw logic out the window. Um, I have a guy named Eddie in a movie, you know? He gets we, can, we definitely have some sort of psychokinetic <laughs> telekinesis, um, some sort of supernatural <laughs> bullshit. That's always good to throw in. Yes. Eddie! But all this, he's still holding down the mic on the radio so right. he can hear his you can't, scream. You can't key. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, the guy on the other end, yeah. right. Yeah. See, Lewis is just fucking off the deep end, man. He is just... He is, yeah. He, he's, he's out of there, man. Now, again, what if in this story... Loomis had gone crazy. Mm -hmm. Like certifiable. Like right, actually crazy. Like that could have been an interesting Yeah. Like a avenue to go down. Yeah, and you, you know, again you could have a little bit of Meeker trying to wrangle that wrangle Correct. Loomis away and try and take control of the situation. Right. And have that kind of friction. Right. And then that would give the cops another something to be doing yeah. so that they weren't trying paying to take attention. More rational action. Yeah. Right. I mean, basically anybody listening to this probably could have written a better movie. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting that the Friday the 13th series gets so much like fan fiction and, yeah. um, you know, potential. You've, you've dabbled yeah. in that as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, Nightmare hardly ever gets yeah. fan fiction or... or you know, homemade movie kind of things. Yeah. Why isn't this story the one to get... Like, this is the one that has the worst, like, chronology. Yeah, I mean, it's fractured continuity all over the place in this entire franchise. Like, how come there aren't any good, like, pretend, you know, homemade Michael Myers Fantasy, stories? Yeah. yeah. And this is supposed to be the Myers house, is what you're trying to tell me. Yes. With stained glass windows. Yes. And why is he just standing there holding the knife like that? I have no answers left for you. <laughs> He's been in this pose for a while now, <laughs> holding the knife. He's standing there, it's like... What the fuck happened to my house? What'd you people do? <laughs> and now they're just standing here talking like old buddies. <laughs> Why isn't he stabbing him? Why isn't he stabbing him? Michael's like, it's not my house. <laughs> no, I don't remember. There's nothing like my house. What the fuck you people do? <laughs> this is literally the worst movie of all time. <laughs> it's terrible. Can we go back to the fact that he slept in that shack for one year? <laughs> <laughs> he had a coma? <laughs> Again, with no medical attention. Minimal okay, now, stew. Now we're getting straw. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Insure. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. We do another sequence of climbing out a window in a down in the house. And he just conveniently had a rope ladder <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> and poor Danielle Harris. <laughs> what kind of you know, she's probably not given much direction here. No. Except look scared. Yeah. And you know, she's like Literally, head moving back and forth, and yeah. 
being paralyzed and shaking and I mean I had imagine she must have been exhausted from this much act this I'm pretty in, sure intensity of acting she had to put in this whole film. I think I'm pretty sure we saw a reflection in this mirror. It looks like a boom a, mic. Almost. A hand. I thought it was a hand, like a finger pointing. Uh, okay. So I think somebody was given direction. Oh, he's got a and revolver. Damn it. We didn't That count. was seven shots. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure that was seven Thank shots. You. Shit. <laughs> Unless that's I'm pretty sure that was seven. <laughs> Not a one of them hit Michael Myers. No. What kind of a goddamn policeman are you? It's funny because his character uh, on ER hmm. for, I don't know, seven or eight years, he was on ER as like a the, recep the receptionist at the desk hmm. kind of guy. And the story was that he was a former police officer. <laughs> Which always made me laugh, because <laughs> I thought back to this. How many people have died in this town? <laughs> like, for real. How much population is left? Why do people keep moving here and having children? <laughs> yeah. Like, at some point, and same thing with Springfield in the Friday or Nightmare on Elm Street movies, like... You'd think Spring at some Wood. point, Spring, Spring Wood, Wood, excuse me, you'd think that people would just be like, you know what, we're, nah. this, is, this isn't this is going to be a town anymore. We're nah. just going to, we're going to incorporate we're into another. Freddy's dead. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Here we go in the laundry chute. Now this is the part where you remember back to the fact that Loomis <laughs> secured the bottom end. Just out of plot convenience, that's all. Right. There's no practical reason for him to do that. No. No. At the time that this movie uh -huh. came out, I lived in a house that had a laundry chute. Ah. It was the coolest thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it was a two-story a two house, and there was a, a cubby in the upstairs bathroom and a cubby kind of in a downstairs hallway. Mm. And both of them just dropped to basically an open hole in the ceiling of the basement. <laughs> and um, we didn't, it was kind of in the middle of the room, so you didn't, we didn't keep like a laundry basket there. Oh, okay. But, you know, stuff would just drop down and, <laughs> and then you go down and get it, uh, you know, when it's time to do the laundry. And man, that was the coolest damn thing when I was 10 years old. Like, you know, down goes the uh, the Hulk Hogan wrestling buddy, went, went down the laundry chute, uh, you know. <clears throat> so part of me thinks, why would you even have a bottom on there? But I guess it's so that, you know, your clothes can pile up and they don't land on the floor in the middle mm. of the basement, Maybe. which makes sense. Mm. And then you can open the thing into the basket. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Kind of like that basket right there. <laughs> Which is still there in this abandoned house that isn't really their house. He walks around holding this knife. Yeah. In, in a very a, rigid fashion. In a stabbing position. Yeah. Like, that's not how people hold a knife no. when you're walking around with a knife. No. Also, I don't believe, and maybe this is a really old house, but I don't believe that they make laundry chutes big enough for people to get in yeah. for this very reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, Loomis was able to just secure this thing no problem. Yeah. He had to rip the hinge off because he <laughs> couldn't get it open. This doesn't even look like a... I mean, this just looks like a regular old... Uh, uh, like air duct. duct. Yeah. yeah. Which means she's going to do her best John McClane here and, <laughs> and try to jimmy up. Which I don't even think would be possible because there's, there's so. no footing in there at all. No. In fact, the sides are so thin that the knife can just yeah. go right through. Yeah. Like, what? There you go. 
That's some video game shit there, where you just <laughs> step on the knife at, to boost yourself up. <laughs> like, what is she holding on to? Oh, a ledge. <laughs> From the first floor. I see. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not buying it. Nah. Here's again. Let's kill some time by yeah. having a prolonged scene. It's burnt and burnt. Again, for a film that runs well over 90 minutes. There are plenty of theatrical films that run like 85. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They could have definitely done, you know, that's, my guess was 88 because I was yeah. trying, I thought that was being, con, you know, long. Yeah. <clears throat> it feels like two hours when you're watching. Yeah. Yeah, the pacing just in gear and, and on neutral all the time, back and forth in this film. And really, what do we have to show for it? What is, what's the plot of this movie? There is no fucking plot. Just like <laughs> Michael wanders around town, decides to kill people when he feels like doing it. The psychic thing has nothing to do with anything at this point in the time. Which they haven't explained. Haven't explained. Feeds into nothing. Whatever kind, sort of like weird psychic uh, homicidal bond these two characters are supposed to have means nothing now because he's trying to kill her anyway. Same thing he was trying to do in the last film before all that shit happened. It amounts to nothing. There's a, there's... And we get the heat from killing the dog. Yeah. And now he finds out. she finds out Rachel's dead. It only took like an hour and ten minutes to f for characters to find out she's been missing this whole time. Right. She died this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> and meanwhile, he staged this whole thing. Dragged, <clears throat> dragged all these bodies from... Across town. Half, across, halfway across town. Drag them all the way up here. And set the stage for it all. All these candles, the casket, all this nonsense. Right. Yeah, don't forget. And nobody saw him doing any of this stuff throughout the entire day. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. Loomis. Meanwhile, he was running around town from one place to the next with Tina and everything. Again, where did he find time for all this shit? And whose casket is this? Like, I get that he wants to have a casket. I had no idea. I mean, I don't understand it, but I... Yeah. I mean, Loomis basically got on top of her in the hospital bed and yelled, Somebody dug up a grave! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of Harley this, racist. This is all stylistic bullshit, really. That's all it really is. Yeah. Like... And the, let's I remember them... Go ahead. Because I remember them in the trailer saying, Michael is finally unmasked. He was unmasked in the first film. Yeah. At the end of the first film, he was unmasked. We saw his face clear as day. They were trying to promote, oh, now he's unmasked and everything. It's like, one, doesn't look anything like he did in the first film, especially he's not ten years older than he was in the, the first film. Also, where's he getting his haircuts and shaves from? Yeah. And wasn't, and he was burnt, he's burned all over his hands. His face isn't burned. The mask would have melted to his face. Exactly. Bad shit. Just bad shit all over the place. They they, they don't respect any continuity because obviously the Myers house, they don't give a shit. That look that doesn't look anywhere close to it. I mean, I could I could give them a slight bit leeway if it was something that just didn't look this grandiose even, of, a, of a house. Even if they just shot a couple of exteriors of the original house. Yeah, and, and just built a soundstage. And then did the inside on a soundstage that didn't match yeah. the geography. Yeah. That still would have been more acceptable. Yeah. <clears throat> and see, who walks around with their hand like yeah, that? Yeah, that's very just... Again, from two onwards, I just don't understand the performer's intent with his body language. None of it seemed... Because, again, with Nick Castle in the first one, everything felt very natural felt very fluid it felt very much like a shark is what i kind of compared back to it just felt relentless and natural it felt like a force of nature everything else feels like a rigid fucking robot yeah it's so unnatural
And when did this booby trap get set up? Yeah. Oh, more shotguns. A tranquilizer. Tranquilizers. Well, okay. Gunshots don't do shit, but let's trank them. Again, again, that's, that's another problem with a franchise that goes this fucking far. It's like, at a certain point, nothing's believable anymore. Right. You can't do anything to Michael Myers that seems convincing that you can stop him because you've thrown everything at him. Right, Sort of so, a nuclear bomb. So even at, if, at the end, whatever they do to kill him, the audience isn't going to buy it. No, they've already blown him up. They shot him 50 fucking times already. Once, at least in the eye. Yeah. Stabbed not the, his, not stabbed the eye both, that was just crying. You, you, <laughs> you stabbed both of his eyes out. You stabbed it or shot both of his eyes out, so he should have no eyes. But he, he just be, cried out of one of them. You ought to be blind <laughs> from part one onwards. Part two onwards. I mean, at least we had Elm Street. It was much, it was completely supernatural. A lot of uh, metaphysical type of ways you can reinterpret Freddy and figure out different ways to, like a philosophy or whatever the case it is is he going to kiss him? him and defeat him <laughs> might as well at this point has Daniel Harris spent more than 10 minutes of this movie not crying god no like I said she must have been exhausted from the level of acting they forced they, they made her do in this film and all all, all respect to her for for not falling off in the quality of what she was putting out on screen. Yeah. And what is... Oh, wait! Look! They arrested he's, him! He's arrested and shackled. Just like I said. And the other dude that's been wandering around town doing jack shit. Yeah. Where... What is your agenda, okay, sir? It's all set up. And they have no idea exactly where it's going. That's the problem with, with films like this. Where you have a ton of setup, you have no intention, no no clear intent of where it's going, and by the time you get to the next film, you got a completely new screenwriter, a completely different director. They're gonna play completely and change the intent of anything you might have intended to do with any of it. So, what was the point of it in the first place? Nothing. Exactly. There is no point. I mean, it's all set up. There's no explanation for any of it. There's not even a hint as to what any of it fucking means. The thorn crab, this Men in Black stuff, and all of it, just like it's just there to tease another sequel, because we're not going to give you anything to go off of from what we. I mean, set it up really here. is like a dusty finish almost of, <laughs> um, like it's so bad because they have spent the entire movie setting up a payoff that doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like. He gets off the bus, and you're like, okay, I'm intrigued. Who is this person with the silver t tip shoe? Yeah. And then... Nothing. And then, right. It all leads to this. 99% of the screen time is him just wandering around doing jack shit. Showing up where things are happening, but doing nothing about it. Until the last minute of the film where he does this. You have no explanation of who he is, what his intent is, anything. Other than the fact that he has the same tattoo... Yeah. That's it. And apparently he'd been walk carrying a freaking machine gun around in his bag all day long, doing nothing with it. And again, if his intent was to take Michael away, or whatever the case was, why do you wait until this moment to do something he about it? He also apparently had a bomb with him. A bomb. A very cartoonishly looking <laughs> set here with, with everything bent out like, like Superman just freaking burst out of there or some shit. Uh, and yet, again, no payoff. Yeah. No explanation. There's no payoff to anything that they've had with this character of Jamie throughout the entire film. None of it has any bearing on where the film ends up. And look, that's it. It's roll credits. Yeah. They're not even... This is like the halfway point of them telling this story. Yeah. And even in the producer's cut of six, they had deleted footage from this ending where the blind man in black 
kidnaps Jamie and they cut it out of this film. Because why? The whole thing is a oh, it does say Michael Myers, not the shape. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the whole thing is it's done as if like they intended to make another one back to back. And that's weird because stunt player George Wilbur, the guy who played Michael in the previous film, still did stunt work on this film, but no, didn't play I, Myers. I bet it was I bet it was archival from the maybe, beginning. Maybe, yeah. I possibly. bet they had to give him screen time okay. from, from that first that makes sense. the first five minutes. Okay. Oh Dobber. Robert Dobber. <laughs> Robert Dobber Price. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got old R. T. Tom oh. Wharton. And Chewy. Chewy Pappas. Pappas. Sure, sure. Sure. Kim Hicks. So, this is, like, for real, the worst, the worst, right? This is... Yeah. I mean... Because the script makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And, Skipper, uh, I don't... I don't even know what to say. Like... Who Rambo? Who <laughs> is <laughs> You're distracted now. Who thought that this was a good idea? And again, this feels a lot like those Elm Street sequels where we're just like churn about, we don't care. Okay. We just need a product out by this point in time. We yeah, don't but care about anything on. else. A lot of them. Some Night of them. Nightmare Five, which ha- came out the same year, which yeah. was a terrible movie, and we've previously discussed yeah. it. The link is somewhere on this page. Go find it. Yes. Um at least it might not might not have been good, but it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. This did not. There's no. This is a ramshackle assembly of random ideas that go nowhere. The beginning of this is really the last film. Yeah. Which I guess, in its own way, had a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. And then the middle of this movie is all set up yeah and then just when you get to something interesting happening yeah. they fade to black yeah. and roll the credits which yeah. we're talking over yeah that's it yes with nothing else in the works no it would be another six years before the next film and by that time nobody gave a shit this oh my you can't even put it into words how bad this movie is. No. And that leads us to our poll. <laughs> well, originally we wanted to have a poll about what was the worst horror sequel of 1989. Um, or, I guess, of, film in of, general. of the ones that we've covered. Because we yeah. were going to include Shocker as well. But we we um, kind of, Shocker is kind of above these. <laughs> right. In a lot of ways. Um, with the options being Shocker, this film... Nightmare on Elm Street 5, and then, of course... Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason Takes Manhattan. Yes. All of which came out in 1989. All of which are admittedly bad. Yeah. Um, so, we kind of were hoping that y'all would rank them. Yeah. Um, and uh, now that we've covered four bad 1989 horror films, <laughs> let us know uh, what you think is the best one of them. Yeah. Um, because it surely isn't this fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> and take a lot of explanation <laughs> if you did. Oh, I've got myself worked up. You were really worked up during this. <laughs> oh. That's a rare uh, turnaround there. She usually you gets a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, a little riled. <laughs> Irrationally so. <laughs> I yeah okay. <laughs> we're we're gonna all go to bed now and. <laughs> And we're going to just pretend this never happened. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you for tolerating that with us. Because as much as we hate it, it was a ton of fun. Yeah. But we'll, we'll need a breather before sex. We, yeah. we discussed that. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And we still, we got to figure out what we're doing as far as the producer's cut, if anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that. We'll do something else first, then sort that. Come back. We'll come yes. back. Yeah, we need so. a break. Yeah. Woo! That's a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. As Jeff Goldblum would say, that, that's one big pile of shit. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. We'll let you all go. So Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let thank us you. know uh, about the poll. Which which girl you like. Rank the 89 movie. Put it in the comments. Tell yes. us how much we're full of shit. We don't care. 
As long as you enjoy it. Yeah, as long as you're having fun, we're having fun. We're going to keep yes. doing it. So, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back in due time with something else very special. So, bye-bye. Nighty-night. <laughs>